Hey everyone, it's Adorable Daniela, and I have been up all night trying to get these exotic swords so I can put this video together for you guys. Uh, it's quite an uh, involved process, just like originally, and it's actually a little bit more difficult. I recommend that you get yourself a fire team of friends, so you can do this. Uh, you can probably also do it with randoms, but it would be a lot more difficult. And if you try that route, you're going to have to bring them into your party or into a fire team or something like that because it is definitely a difficult quest. First thing you'll have to do is go to Lord Shax and he will have the final pieces for the quest for you. After that, you'll go to the Dreadnought and you'll see that there is a new strike okay. and it is a 300 light level strike, so not the simplest of things. Um, there is an area during the strike, if you're at all familiar with it, it's uh, the Sunless Cell one, um, where the Shriekers show up, and we pretty much made sure that we had a hunter, or we all kind of ran together and hoped that we could make it to the door, uh, and to the, well, to the bridge so that you can despawn the enemies. Uh, it doesn't get rid of the Shriekers, but it gets rid of everything else, so I recommend you do that as it really speeds up the process of getting through the strike. Once you actually get to the boss, uh, don't make the mistake that we first made, which is um, we went down there, fought the boss, killed the boss, and then killed the knight. Uh, there was a little bit of a misunderstanding on the quest and what you had to do, and so make sure that you actually kill the knight first, the knight with the burn that you're going for the sword of. Um, so in this case I started with the raised lighter, although I did kind of edit the video a little bit um, because I was helping them out with the arc sword first. So the raised lighter was technically my last, but in the video you'll see it as the first. So that means that the knight that you have to kill is the solar knight. He will have a flame shield and he shoots flames. He's actually the most difficult in my opinion and the two people that I was with. So and just be careful of that. You'll have to essentially DPS Alakal, the Dark Blade, down to uh, Slivers. And then what you'll want to do before you do all that is actually take out the other two knights of the burns that you're not worried about. You're going to have to do one sword at a time, uh, unless you are like amazing at the game and can actually do all three. But uh, it's pretty difficult with four uh, majors and ultras coming after you at the same time as all of the Thrall and Crystal, etc. So I recommend that you just take out, uh, if you're going for Raised Lighter, then take out the Void one and the Arc one. The Void one shows up about halfway through the fight of DPSing down the boss, Alakul. And the, the blue one, actually, the Arc one shows up right away. So just take him out right away, uh, take out the Void when he shows up, and then just kind of dance around the battlefield as you DPS down the boss. Once he's at Slivers, you're going to want to uh, get together with your group. And if you all have swords, this can definitely help as you can all basically just tag team the knight with the uh, solar shield. So take him out and then you'll have to within 30 seconds of killing the knight of whichever burn for the sword that you're going for, uh, kill Alec Hull. It's really not that difficult, especially because if you have three people with swords all over on Alec Hull, he is, uh, I think, unable to teleport, at least it seems like it takes him a lot longer. Uh, again, and if you have him at Slivers, it shouldn't take more than maybe two or three slashes from each of you. After you've done that, you're going to have to go back to uh, Lord Shacks. You will immediately get a quest update uh, after as long as you did everything correctly. Remember, it has to be the knight with the burn that you're going for and then Alec Hole within 30 seconds of each other. So I would say with most of ours, we were able to do it within probably 5 or 10 seconds. Um, so, But your results may vary. Just make sure that it's within 30 seconds and you'll definitely get the quest update. Then you'll go back to Lord Shax and he will give you the sword. Uh, at this point, the sword doesn't actually require all that much to level up. I recommend you spend Modes of Light, which is what I did in the video for each of the swords. Uh, and I do show all the different swords with the different uh, burns for which ones you take out and then taking out alcohol as well as all in the video. So uh, you're probably watching that right now. So just go ahead and watch that and it'll give you an idea of what to do. 
Um, once you actually use the Mozart Light on the sword, you can get it all the way up, and I think it's the last two that you actually have to use a couple more materials. Uh, I think it's, uh, weapon materials and some of those, um, planetary materials, I think, as well. So again, I, I do show the raised lighter, the dark drinker, and the bolt caster in the video. And um, I just want to do a shout out to the two people that helped me out, which were Deadly Richie 33 and XL Evil Hobo XL. I think that's right. I really appreciate guys being able to help me out with this, and I'm sure my viewers will I definitely appreciate that I was able to get uh, the video out for them. Uh, regarding the swords and everything, but this is pretty much all you have to do This is the only last step that you have to complete and once you do it, you're good um, But you will have to probably do each of the swords separately like I said So uh, like I said, I started with the arc to help them out then I did the void and then finally the solar but you can do it in any order and um, I don't know how it all works uh, if you have them on different characters because I have them all on my Titan, but I imagine that it's virtually the same thing. You might have to go through some of the other steps ahead of time. But if you already have it at the arms day thing, then you'll definitely get the new quest, and you'll just have to do this final step, and then you'll have the swords. Uh, in the video, at the very, very end, I do show some of the actual combat using the swords and their special abilities. So I'll talk about those a little bit. The arc sword, um, which is called the bolt caster, when you use the uh, R trigger attack, he kind of like does a little swing up, uh, like throwing a, a shuriken or something. It kind of spins around and throws this uh, shuriken of light, and it actually has a thunderstorm attached to it, so it's really cool. You can throw thunder and lightning at enemies. Uh, it's really, really useful. It does uh, damage over time, and the DOT is actually pretty good. I think it was 713 on the 310 that I was using against most of the uh, enemies with the um, different shields. Uh, of course, if they have an arc shield, then you can pretty much easily take them out. Uh, the raised lighter, on the other hand, has a, uh, I think it's called like a holy uppercut. It's also called something Phoenix, but in any case, what you do is you do like this uppercut of flames, and if they have a flame shield, they'll probably take them out in one or two hits. Uh, if they're a major or ultra, we actually were able to take out the wizards in the strike, the 300 light one, with only about two hits from the raised lighter sword, so it shouldn't be too problematic for you. And the final one is the, the Void one, uh, which is the Dark Drinker, and that one is pretty cool. It does kind of like a Legend of Zelda uh, sword spin, but it, like the Hurricane spin, almost like from Wind Waker. It's pretty long. It really reminds me of what the Blade Dancer does with their attacks when they do that little spin around. Uh, I think it's called Showtime. Um, so it's really cool. Uh, it's really kind of situational though. I think that the bolt caster is probably the most useful, especially like in PvP because it has that range and people probably aren't going to see that coming right away. If you just got the sword and you jump on a PvP, you'll probably be able to take a few people out with it once you get the heavy because it has an amazing ranged attack that, like I said, throws uh, thunder and lightning. But again, the Void one is really good for situations where you are surrounded by enemies as it does a spin attack and it sends Void energy in all directions, very similar to the Showtime attack that the Blade Dancer has. Um, anyways, this is pretty much the video. I really hope it helped you guys out. I apologize that I'm just super tired right now, so it may not come out as good as, as I would like it to. Um, I did some of the editing and it took quite a while for me to get the video out. But uh, hopefully I'll have it up in time for you guys to do everything. And thanks so much for watching. Enjoy the, the footage at the end. And have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.
dark soul goes screaming into the pit between the stars. The creatures of the hive are... walk this world. Taken King defeated, but not Xenobiological material. Just a reminder, if you haven't checked out my first video on the exotic swords, you can do so with the video that I have right here on the screen. Just go ahead and click it and it'll go to it. This shows you all of the steps up until the Arms Day uh, final quest that I went through today. Thanks so much again for watching. Please do not forget to like the video if you liked it and subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it and all the comments that I get. Thank you so much and you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.